Thank you all so much. This is the beginning of the recording. We're here down at KT Glassworks, uh, where we're going to be touring the studio space and the hot shop KT Glassworks uh, that Kazuki Takizawa runs. Uh, Kazuki is an artist that has a solo exhibition up at Traff Contemporary right now titled Tomoshibi. Uh, please swing by the museum and check it out. And I'll go ahead and hand it over if you can show us a little bit around, Kazuki. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kazuki Takizawa, and uh, uh, thank you so much, Andres, and the museum, Craft Contemporary Museum, for uh, hosting this online programming. I'm so excited to have technical issues. I'm so excited to have everybody here at the studio. Um, we are actually located in West Adam neighborhood of Los Angeles, and it's uh, maybe about 15 minutes away from the museum. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're up here. Um, this is my studio called KT Glassworks, and this is where I make my work. So I'm in my showroom upstairs, uh, kind of a cute little small room that I have. And uh, this is where I do my creative uh, uh, work. So um, I have some sculptural uh, items that are like pedestal sized pieces here uh, for show. Um, and so I have, uh, you know, kind of pieces that are variety of pieces that are, um, you know, kind of representative of the kind of stuff that of work that I do. Um, I also, you know, through my uh, studio, KT Glassworks, I also make products. So uh, over here on this side of the showroom, we have some uh, like a little examples of uh, what we make in the studio. And, you know, we uh, at the studio, we do um, events, classes, and uh, lessons, and uh, um, and uh, you know, custom uh, glass productions. So uh, that's kind of what we do over here. Um, we have also other amazing glass artists kind of coming through to make their own work. So um, we'll head down to the hot shop uh, in a minute. Um, here's an example of the piece that's uh, in the exhibition. Uh, we have about thirty. 35 or um, I can't I, I don't remember the final count but we have a lot of these bottles standing in the center uh, of the exhibition room um, and uh, it's a really um, uh, it's it's an exhibition that uh, we've been working for um, a few years to to make it happen so if you guys are in LA area slide uh, uh, it right in front of the uh, La Brea Tar Pit so uh, please go over there and check it out in person um, today we're going to be making, uh, I get a lot of questions on how I make this, these like lines, these are called canes, uh, in the glass pieces. So I thought this would be a good time to, to, uh, explain how to do that and kind of give you guys a demonstration from start to finish. So, um, in the beginning of the demo, I'll be, uh, doing the prep work to produce, uh, uh, these line works. Uh, which are which are called canes, and uh, yeah, they have uh, different patterns. Sorry, my hand is so shaky. It's my coffee in the morning, probably. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm so excited because uh, now we will have this, uh, uh, you know, the whole process on 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 video. And so I have a, a piece like this, uh, a little bit slightly larger with a few more pieces. Uh, and so we'll make something that has a uh, black and white, you know, uh, tons of line and line work uh, downstairs. So let's head down to the hot shop. And uh, be careful coming down the ladder. And it's already really hot. You want me to hold the camera? Yep. Oops. I, I apologize. You guys just press something there. All right, I hope everybody's still there. <laughs> yeah, had the adventure of climbing down the ladder. That's always fun. So this is my, uh, yeah, thank you so much, Rudy. And uh, this is my studio. Uh, and uh, this is the hot shop part of the studio where we have the furnace, the reheating chamber, the glory hole, 
and a couple of ovens over here to make this uh, glass uh, glass blowing uh, happen. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of quickly show you around and maybe I'll take you over to the cold shop as well, it's, which is, I think it's a pretty important part of uh, glass making. Um, so if you want to come and follow me, I'll show you. Look out for the ladder. So. Yeah, just quickly, uh, this is the cold shop. And this is where we do our cutting, grinding, polishing, drilling, carving of the glass. So when I'm working on, when I finish blowing the piece in the hot shop, um, uh, you know, we would do like the cold fabrication uh, things over here. So this is an example of one of my minimalist series work. Um, and uh, it has those uh, cane patterning in it. So um, this is what we're going to be doing a demonstration on today. Uh, so a piece like this would be standing up, but without the cold shop, it wouldn't be standing up. Like the bottom of these pieces, these pieces are, are ground um, and, and, you know, like cut, ground, and polished. So I am basically, you know, finishing, taking what came out of the oven in the hot shop and just kind of working in the cold shop to, to finishing. So I will be over here uh, with the spinning lathe with the diamond engraved uh, di diamond wheel. And I'll be like pretty much engraving or carving the glass just like this with, with running water and, and an apron. Okay. So. Yes, so this over here is the diamond saw where you can cut glass. Uh, and then you can slide in and cut glass. Um, yeah, pretty much uh, a lot of the tools that uh, we use in the cold shop has uh, tiny bits of diamond impregnated on the surface. So it, that's why it's sparkly over here. And that's that's the you know abrasive material that removes the, the glass. So that that's, that allows it to cut. And I see water. Yes. Yes. So the water is um, you know there um, for any time we do like cutting or grinding or polishing. Just because uh, the you know the the rotation of the tool, um, it's going to heat up the glass really fast. And, and in, in, you know, when the glass uh, heats up, it, it cracks. So uh, usually, you know, uh, we're in here very slippery, very, you know, like you got to hold on to your piece. Um, yeah, pretty hard. And uh, so that's, that's one thing that's uh, a little bit different uh, between the hot shop and the cold shop is like, you know, we actually use water and um, these abrasive, uh, you know, uh, wheels and, um, and and saw blades to uh, to shape the glass. So over here we have the belt sander uh, with the belts right here, so we can take it from rough belt sanding to all the way up to polish with this fork. Um, or uh, we have this special thing called Prizac belts. Um, yes, and uh, we have a few of these lap wheels, uh, which are for making flat spots on the bottom of the pieces. So I will be here like this, kind of, you know, when the pieces are, ro uh, the, when the wheel's rotating, I'll be like this and just kind of moving across to kind of find the center like that. Um, so yeah, I do um, like hours of work in here to finish that off. And, uh, yeah, so different coarseness, like we got the rough, rough wheel, uh, kind of like a finer, you know, uh, finer grit wheel. And then we can do our polishes on this other wheel. Uh, cutting lathe, uh, drill press, the glass. Also, this is water fed. And then uh, polishing. So right here, we'll be polishing. 
Um, when this is on the blowpipe, it's attached to here and it, it feels a lot heavier. It's like carrying, trying to carry the whole weight from here, but it's actually not that heavy. Um, I'd say like 12 pounds or 10, 10 to 12 pounds or something like that, if I had to guess. Um, it's blown, it's like hollow. So that's what makes it really light. Um, this whole thing all over here, the, the wall thickness is probably, you know, any, uh, around like quarter inch and I have a solid foot. So um, it's, it's not that heavy. Okay, let's uh, head on to the uh, hot shop. So we're gonna be pulling canes to start with because I get so many questions like, how does this pattern making, how is this possible? So it's done in a very different like stages. Um, so today I'm like super happy because I'm gonna do all the stages I have myself and David over here is a friend of mine and an amazing artist. He's gonna help us today. Uh, and what he's doing over here is lining up the pattern on this high temperature ceramic plate. Um, we got a, a you know wall right here, uh, which is gonna kind of which kind of shows you the how big of a a pattern we have to make. Um, and these tiny little, uh, you know, uh, marinis, they're called, uh, are basically, you know, what we've made uh, in the studio. And um, so all the lines that are in the marinis are, um, every, every line will be, we, we actually pulled. Um, so these are called filigrana canes. So I make them in black and I make them in white as well. So, uh, and there's tons of different colors in glass. So, um, so this can be done in, in a lot of different colors. This is a, an ancient uh, Italian uh, technique. So each one of the little lines that you see on here in those pieces was at one time one of those yes. canes. Yeah, yeah, so, so it starts, starts with, with the filigrana simple, simple straight canes, and then we can bundle them and twist them, and we'll make a, a tamper or twisty cane. Um, so you could do white, black, white. And uh, I, I believe there's about 50 lines in here. So every single one of those Marinis have 50 tiny little lines, and that gets assembled together just like David's doing, and then um, it gets fused, and then we can make a piece. Kind right. of reminds me a little bit of that kind of like candy process, like how to make coffee. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, it's like the patterns all the way through, and um, and we'll chop them with the Marini chopper. And actually, David, if you want to start um, prepping that first uh, start, um, we'll, go, we'll go through the, the filigrana chain method. And uh, so I've kind of prepped this uh, demo today, kind of like a cooking show almost. Me and David came in early today, uh, and then we've been kind of preparing. So. Uh, so we can cram a lot of stuff in this in this uh, you know demo, so so we can get through all the stages. So, but what David has uh, heating over there in the garage is uh, basically start of the filigrana paint, and uh, right there is the uh, you know gathering iron, the punty that he uses, um, and on the end of the pipe, on the end of the punty, there is a really stiff um, color white. Uh, that that we kind of prepped. Um, so we'll take some clear uh, layers of glass on that, and then we'll stretch it across the the shop of the of the entire room. All right. Kazuki, how hot does the glory hole get? Yeah, just just by gazing. I don't have a temp temperature uh, reading on this, but I think around 20, uh, 2000 to 2350 or something like that. 
Um, this is the glory hall where we do our reheating. Um, so David's reheating our color. Thank you. Thank you, David. <laughs> All right. So um, this is this is the white. So we'll do like a lot of back and forth. Um, you know, the, I'll be over here shaping. And then this part of the process takes a long time. So we've done it for um, for everybody. Thanks, David. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, now we're ready to take a fresh coat of glass on this. Yeah, it's gonna be amazing. Uh, if you wanna follow, and it's a little hot right here, so you might wanna stay, uh, have your camera a little further away, but I'm gonna take a gather like on here, just by coiling and, you know, dipping into the a pot of uh, uh, glass. I can do, uh, I can start building that clear layer around it. So if I have like imperfection, like a bubble, like I can snip that out. All right. And then, you know, the slip mark, I have to melt that. Um, Yeah, so there is a lot of uh, teamwork that happens, and uh, that's one of the beautiful things about this, working with this material, is that I get to work with so many amazing artists here, like David. Um, we got a few people who is like uh, really skilled, uh, who work in the studio and um, do lessons. Um, so I really want to thank all of them for making that happen over here. This is just a folded piece of newspaper that we use for shaping. And we are actually, no water off. <laughs> okay, I, you know, like we come in in the morning and then like we think we set up everything, but you know, like it's, it's so hard. There's so much to set up. So setup is also like a big part of glass flying too. Um, and then I'm going to take my final gather on this and I'll be stretching uh, the glass into a cane, filigrana cane. So after I take a gather, David's going to make what's called a post. And then we're going to attach that together and then walk away from each other. You'll see. I'm so happy I'm able to show, show this process in a video because I have such a hard time explaining to people. <laughs> It's just a really long process that, um, yeah, it's just so hard to kind of explain the whole thing. So right here in the pipe cooler, I'm just pulling the, the punchy so I can hold it closer to the head of the punchy. But right here, I got a fresh coat, of, two fresh coats of glass on the rod of white that I uh, showed you earlier. And uh, if I have some things that I don't want, like a bubble, I can definitely, ooh. Yeah, talking and glass blowing is not my best. <laughs> not the best. Uh, I, I, I can only, I'm like the kind of person who I can do one thing at a time, honestly. And so, like, if I'm talking, it shows on, you know, it shows on the piece. Uh, so, I'll thank try, you. I'll you're, try. you're doing amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try my best. So, right here is a teamwork happening. I'm already have David started on this, his part of the process um, while I'm heating and uh, kind of getting my setup ready. And uh, Andres, I'm gonna come right behind you and watch out, right there is a hot table. So this piece of equipment is called the Marver. And uh, in the ancient days, they used to use a slab of marble. Uh, but right now it's a, a you know, just a mild steel uh, surface that I use to roll the glass on to shape. Okay, so I'm just kind of like checking in on, check in what part of the process he's at, and we're ready to pull. Okay, so I'm going to take my second to last key right here. Hmm. What's that? Say that one. Okay. Mm, let's have you stand uh, 
right here. Yeah, thank you. And uh, he's ready. I'm a little bit behind, but uh, I'm going to shape this uh, into shape. Uh, pulling cane is not not the easiest thing, honestly. It's one of the advanced techniques that I kind of learned um, later in my, you know, glass blowing. Uh, I don't know learning here but it has to have it flared out like that and uh, the bottom the bottom right now the bottom has to be cold so it, it, it doesn't you know it has to have a specific temperature but basically so I'm gonna quench that tip in water so I can really cool the bottom of that Yeah, I'll, I'll get in a little bit more technical for those of you who are glass blowers on the, in the audience, um, just to give you a kind of a quick tip. Um, I'll take my heat, uh, it's lopping really a lot in there, and then I'll hold the punch you with my right hand, with my thumb facing up, and David's already kind of got my uh, post ready and hit that on center. Stretch that to the diameter that you want. Use your elbow, right? Like, and then let that kind of cool down a little, a little bit. You got to set that diameter of the cane before you pull. All right. Uh, actually, oh, I don't know. <laughs> We're all like, uh, this talking thing is confusing. Usually he doesn't walk and I walk, but. Right now we're doing everything reverse because uh, we'd like to do it that way during the demo, I guess. But watch out right behind you, David. And uh, go, go, go a little faster. And uh, <laughs> so yeah, the very, very. Uh, <laughs> I got, I got uneven over there. That it's is a amazing. little cold there, so I'm a little <laughs> bit worried that this might break. But. Um, so that was pretty exciting. I I, I should have I should have I should have gone over there, right? And then, but it's okay. Yeah, I mean, I can't I can't talk and blow glass at the same time. You know, it's hard. All About right. how long All is right. this right now? Uh, this how long do you think this is, David? Uh, one, two. Like 50, 50, 50 feet or something. I don't know. How many? Yeah. All right, so that's how that filigrana cane is pulled. Oh, some, something like that, right? And uh, David, if you want to start torching the, the next set of uh, yes. over there. So I'll show you. You could call me I'm cheating, or you could call me I just prepared uh, well for the demo. But what I did is basically I have, you know, maybe about 30, uh, 30 of the black lines. Uh, you know, first set in the middle, second set on the very surface, uh, already rolled up and already smoothed out. So all I have to do is take my last dip of glass and then apply the lines that David's heating. The filigrana cane that we just pulled is a, uh, we cut it and we preheat.
Can you still hear me over that torch? Okay, very nice. So um, usually this process will start, we'll do it from start to finish. You can blast it pretty hard, David. Um, but right now I'm reheating it because uh, it was sitting in the garage. Garage is this equipment right here. It's basically where you park your glass parts. So what I what I did is uh, uh, what we did is uh, we did the prep work and we put it in the garage and yeah now it's ready. So we just saved like 15 minutes of the work. Uh, how you doing? Okay. Okay, so I got my last layer of glass. And I'm gonna shape it up into a cylinder so I can apply those straight canes on this cylinder. But if I turn slowly, you can see that it falls. So I'm continuously turning so I can keep this on center. And uh, I'm gonna go over there and roll it up. Okay. Hey, thank you, David. All right. So now we got two layers of black lines, and then on the outside, I have white. And that last piece of glass that didn't want to come on is like kind of lifting off, so I'm just going to make it behave well. <laughs> Yeah, and then these guys, I gotta take care of it because it's gonna wanna flip and, you know, attach to the important part of the piece. So right here is like already, uh, you know, pretty solid piece of glass uh, with a kind of a, a little, you know, it's, it gets heavy when it's solid. It's not blown like the last piece I showed, I, the, the, the piece I showed you in the cold shop. How heavy do you think this is, David? The glass, this whole thing? Five pounds. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, so we do, when we do like pain day, we would do, uh, the filigrana cane all like morning and a little bit more past the afternoon or something and then we use the pre-cut ones to make the twisty canes uh, in the afternoon. So the prep work, uh, you know, uh, takes, you know, two of our time, like pretty full day or something and we'll get a lot of lines made. Okay, so my goal right now is to melt all the lines and kind of remove that texture. I'm also kind of watching the heat of the glass, making sure that's even all the way. Otherwise, you'll end up having thick, thick spot and thin spot, and sometimes it falls on the ground when it's too thin. So I really have to take multiple heats and um, even out the temperature. So uh, the cool thing about this style of uh, 
Pauline Kane is uh, I'm going to use a, a hand drill to spin. And what's actually even cooler is how fast David turns. <laughs> you got to get that on film. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, all, all joking aside, uh, um, yeah, you know, um, and uh, back in the day, they, didn't, they don't have a drill, so um, it's like you have to do this all by hand. And, you know, um, I prefer the drill just because uh, I do, if I do it all day, eight hours or four hours, and my hand starts locking. So I just I just like don't have a problem with using grill, but other people do use hand to spin the glass as well. Okay, uh, David, go ahead. And uh, so right now, David again is making a post for the pain, but this time it's going to be a little bit different post. So instead of the making the post on a punty, he's gonna make the post on uh, yeah on a piece of metal that hooks up to the drill. Okay, so I have gotten with the lassie. I've gotten the texture out of the back of the glass, back of my glass. I'm turning a little bit more to the direction of uh, the turning that I'm going to spin this piece because, you know, like if you turn it a different way, then you're basically going to have to unwind that uh, turn like this. Yeah, right now it's probably around, you know, like 1800 degrees or something, but every second the glass is cooling down and solidifying. So now it's super cold. And that's where the glory hole is a really good tool, equipment to reheat the glass. Okay, he's ready. Yeah, thank you. And then I'll meet you at the same spot. <laughs> uh, let's let's do what you did, what you suggested over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so got my final heat, or maybe not final. One more heat actually, but I'm gonna shape my glass, change that shape. Oh, I forgot to grab my tweezers, but it's okay. So this time I hold it with my left hand. Center it. Thank you, Thanks, David. Yeah, he's gonna start spinning. I'm gonna just press the button. <laughs> Watch that hand. Okay, I'm just walking very slowly as I want to control the diameter of the pole. And I'm just kind of spinning not too fast. But the drill just makes it uh, really able to control the 
the amount of amount of spiral that I I, I can uh, put in this this marine. Yeah, not the best pull, but <laughs> it is there. Okay, so it cools down pretty fast. And once it cools down, you want to stop spinning. Otherwise, this thing will break in half or into different pieces. Um, and then, this tapping will, we can break the piece. Okay, so that's how a twisty cane is pulled. Oh, really? Yeah, that part of the process is so fun. Uh, the twisty cane pattern process is like really fun. So yeah, so I hope that that is starting to make sense now. We pull the Philly grana, Philly grana, and then uh, twisty cane, <coughs> which contains 50 of these lines. All right, so right here is, uh, you know, the start of the of a blown piece with I don't know how many uh, marinis I have, but I have um, tons of marinis that I've lined up this morning. Uh, yeah, and again, that uh, you know sheet of marini plate that David was first working on on the table um, is what makes this the start. We basically, what we did in the morning is uh, we heated up the ceramic plate full of, you know, beautifully lined up uh, marinis and then fused them all together so they're rectangular tile. And then we wrap, wrap the rectangle around the blowpipe so you don't even see the seam of the, you know, the, the roll up and then it's a tube, so we cut the tip off, close the end. Now it's a bubble with pattern, insane, insane, crazy amounts of lines. And so I can blow into it, and uh, and it starts inflating. Ah, just one gather. Nothing crazy. Yeah. So I've taken a fresh coat of glass. I gather a fresh coat of glass on the start. And then we have enough glass to make a piece. So just to get to this point, it takes days of both of my time as well as David's time. And we're you know, maybe pretty close to the finish line, but thank you so much, David. But I have all the pattern I made with all the amount of glass I'm gonna use for this piece. This tool is called the block. Take a heat, please, David. So um, it's uh, one of the wooden tools that we use here in the glass studio. It's very commonly used in all the glass studios. Comes in different sizes, number 10, number 12. And when we make our bigger pieces, it goes up to 12. And so we would be using a uh, bigger pipe. It goes up to, sorry, it goes up to 20 block. Yeah, that's, sorry, uh, 20 block. And then uh, it's not, that at that point, it's not just David who's helping me, it's gonna be 
um, you know, David and Sean and Kate also helps me too. And uh, so, yeah, it's going to be a bigger team. Obviously, it's going to be hot. I mean, heavy. Um, but yeah, this piece is enough to make a, a small piece. So it takes a few heats to get the get the get the glass warm. I'll take another heat, please, David. The tip looks a little hot, so I'm gonna have David take a heat on that. Um, not gas. One second. Can you go through? Go through here. Okay. That's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, the tip's hot because the color is different. All right, blow light. Stop. Um, colors in glass are made by mixing just a tiny bit of min like mineral dust, min mineral dust, or like metal oxide dust. Like so, um, it uh, basically has a different you know composition. Like and you know, so it it behaves differently. It, it's you know some colors are stiffer than others. So I can sometimes use the marver. I'm gonna come over there, Andres, uh, right here to control that problem. Like right now, if I blow a soft color, it's gonna go really thin, and that's a problem. I'm gonna end up having a hole at the bottom of the vessel, so I'm cooling it down with the metal before I blow. So that way I can control the thickness to the way I want. How am I doing on time? Everything okay? Yeah, we're doing good. Uh, okay. So right now, something that you mentioned is the top of the piece is what's connected directly to the rod, and the bottom of the piece is the tip that we see on it right now, right? Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. So that must be from somebody who has some knowledge of glass flying. That's very cool. Um, yes, the, the tip of this bubble is the bottom of the vessel. So I'm thickening, thickening up the bottom of the vessel. We can't keep my hand, hands on the pipe today. What's up, Vijay? All right, so. Yeah, earlier, right, um, I was mentioning that this art form is very much of a teamwork. So David, David is going to take what's called the neckline heat. Yes, please. Let's make it a long piece. Yeah. Watch out for the flame right here. Fire everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah, he's getting the heat in there. Right now the torque is crazy because I just heated that neckline part. Um, but look at his turning, he's so good. Like just keeping it on center. And woo, exciting. It's dropping, huh? Yep. yep. I'm going to catch it for you, David. <laughs> All right, blow. And I'm going to just center that real quick. OK. And stop. Go ahead and turn that uh, angle. Mm -hmm. And finish off that neckline. And level. Go ahead and blow for me, David. Pull a light. Ooh. All right. So yeah, that 
crucial to make that neck plane. Okay, stop. What makes it hard when you have tons of lines like that is, uh, yeah, like it blows out differently. So I have to kind of watch that thickness on each part of the flat. Like for example, where, where it's connected right here, it might be problematic. As in it might get too thin. So uh, you can put the whole thing in the heat to heat the whole thing, or you could do like partial heats like that. That's also going to help you control with the shaping. Um, as I get further down into the process, um, I don't want to heat the whole thing because I don't want to have the whole thing moving. I just want the bottom half of the piece to move to be moving. Okay, blow please, David, blow light. Stop blowing. Okay. Okay, David, I'm going to have you blow light again. Hang on a second. And go blow lights. Oh, perfect. Keep going. Uh, keep going. Blow lights. So I'm using the paper and uh, hitting any high spots while David's giving me the back pressure with the air. Right? Blow. I mean, stop. <laughs> What is it? I'm so confused. <gasps> okay. Okay, so the pattern's starting to do its magic. Like it's got that gestural movement. Just naturally with like the spinning of the glass, you can, um, it does that. It's amazing. All right, um, take a heat on the, over here, up to here, and now I'll just straighten the sidewall again. Yeah, I miss, I stopped messing around a long time ago when I got myself a big jug. Because <laughs> it got hot, it gets hot. Okay. Um, beautiful. I'll take a cap, please. Um. Okay, a little air, light, super light. Stop. Beautiful. Cap. Okay, perfect. I'll take a heat on the uh, bottom, please. So, um, yeah, with glass blowing, um, we always want to work closer, you know, the parts that's closest to the pipe and then up um, towards the tip of the bubble. So right now, David is, you know, you know, doing a selective feeding just on the bottom of the piece. So now, 
the bottom is nice and hot. Uh, I will take a cap in a second. Like now would be good. Uh, off cap. And on again cap. Blow light. Stop. Yeah. All right, blow light. Can I stop? Punchy, please. Yeah. Thank you. So right now the bottom of this piece I've already finished making. Okay. All right. So David is making what's called a punchy. Yeah, you, yeah, bye. All right, so now I have a little bit of time to kind of correct my temperature. So I'm gonna warm this up right here where it's gonna break off. Punty is going to allow me to flip the vessel upside down. So, uh, so that way I can work on the top half of the vessel. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking short heats called flash heats that is just basically going to keep everything warm enough so it doesn't crack. Yeah, I forgot to mention about that part of the glass. A glass shrink when it's cooling down and uh, and if you get it below any certain certain point certain temperature it, it's gonna crack and it happens actually it's beautiful David it happens actually pretty quickly so um, we need to be going back and forth between the heat and the bench to complete your shaping so right now I have my piece moving at the neckline, which is very nice. And I know where my plot problem is right now. I know I have a thin bottom right here. <laughs> so uh, I'm always trying to fix problems uh, during the process. Yep. Yep. Um, and then hopefully, if I didn't drink and not too much coffee, I can put this on center. <laughs> Push. All right, so that's my cue. I got water on tweezers, a little bit of thermal shock, create a little fractured crack right there, and then a light tap. And so this axis is switched. Now it's connected to the beautiful punchy that David brought. And the top of the piece is now, you know, uh, the tip of the glass. I'm going to take this one heat to center the vessel. This is my only chance to center this whole thing and put, put it in center of the, uh, the turning. So I'm just basically looking at the bottom of the piece, finding out where the high spot is, push, and then uh, let it fall back on center. Um, Okay, so that's nice and centered. 
Uh, I'll take a heat on the lip, please. Yeah, he's now heating the tip because if he heats like the back here, that's where I I made that crisp edge, right? So if I heat, if he heats everything, it's gonna be round again. So we have to um, we use temperature to our advantage to get that uh, do the um, make the work happen. Yeah, so what's cool about that transfer piece is I have a, you know, an opening up top, and now I can start working on the top of the piece. I'm okay, David, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, I'm kind of like stretching the top. This is going to make the top of the piece kind of thinner. And also, I'm just kind of trimming the excess of it just because I want to straighten it and also make the lip thinner. Um, I'll take a flask for me. Uh, I'll take a flask for me. Yeah, I'm going to tap off that excess, and if I don't do it right, it taps off, and the whole piece, whole piece falls off. So that's why uh, I had uh, David just kind of, um, you know, get a take another heat like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're close to the finish line, but we're not done yet. So we're just still focus, stay still focused, you know, until we get that piece in the oven. You know, there, there's so many things that could happen and this thing could fall off. Um, so, uh, a piece like this is kind of like there's not that much height to it, but uh, when we worked on those bottles that are really tall, uh, that's a lot of torque, and so it was really fun time uh, funnying those. Yeah. Huh? Okay, David, go ahead and uh, pat all that lip so we can get that straightened. All right, on please. Okay, off please. All right. So now I've started to open it up. And just keep checking that lip for me. Okay. We can only do so much at a time. And I gotta go back for a heat because the bottom gets cold. And I will I don't wanna have this piece cracked, so I'm just making sure I go in for a flash and I do my Partial heating for where I want to do the move, uh, manipulating. Keep flashing occasionally. This heating thing is very tricky. Gets takes years to kind of know what what it feels, not what what it takes to you know have the right heat. Again, I'm just like working from pipe, like closest to the pipe. So I'm gonna go like that, and on, off, and on, off, and on, off. Yeah. 
if you sit on there while you stretch. Yeah, if you need it. All right. I'll... Um, I don't think so. I think I'm just gonna take one more heat, touch it up. I think this will be my last shaping heat. Go ahead and go on the lip piece once. And off. Okay, there's the bottle. All right. Uh -huh. um, yes, I think so. The wood tools will burn is the smoke from the paddle. Yeah, so the yeah, wooden tools definitely create uh, smoke and sometimes fire. Also the newspaper is, you know, uh, definitely caught, you know, uh, burns and smokes. Uh, we also use cork paddles, which is like blocks of cork that we smash the glass with to make flattened vessels. Uh, that smokes a lot. This is a beeswax that I apply on the blades of these uh, the jacks as a lubricant. So right now the blades of the jacks are really warm, so I can use it um, and not create any scars on the glass. All right, suit up please, David. So I feel like the hardest part of the process is at the very end, which I'm gonna do right now, is like try to break the piece off without breaking the piece. <laughs> uh, so, David right now is suiting up with uh, um, protective gear. He's gonna have uh, Kevlar gloves uh, to catch this piece. They put it in the oven and until it's in the oven, it's pretty much like anything could happen. I could tap it right here and it could fall off. They want to be kind of gentle with everything. And uh, just like I did with the transfer, I'm going to use the tweezers to add a little bit of water where I want it to break. Not anywhere else, please. <laughs> One more time, David. Get it really close. Bring it to the polish station. Nice. Nice honey, David. So I got a few seconds to soften that. And then it's gotta go into the box, otherwise it's gonna start cracking. Beautiful. Okay, first thing in the in the box today. There it is. All right, so that's uh, that's it, guys. That's the whole process. Uh, okay, I'm glad we didn't drop that. <laughs> yeah, cool. So. That oven over here is set at 930 degrees. Really great temperature for cooking pizza, um, but this is an electric fired oven. 
where uh, at the end of the day, you know, we you know we fill we fill the oven with tons of beautiful work. Uh, sometimes we've got two benches going, so other people are putting in the box too. And then at the end of the day, I program it to come down all the way down to room temperature very slowly, so it doesn't crack. Um, and uh, hopefully the pieces survive. A lot of sometimes pieces crack. Um, and then we get taken to the cold shop, which I showed you earlier, for any kind of grinding if I had to do anything like that. So, but other than that, that's the whole process. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys so much. Let's see, does anybody have any, any questions that you would I'd like to ask to Kazuki? You could either type them on the chat or um, you could also uh, just unmute yourself. Let's see, Patricia, how do you protect your finished pieces from earthquakes? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I I come from Japan, so I, honestly, they have so much earthquake over there, and it seems like it's not as bad here in California, believe it or not. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, sometimes I use museum wax, sometimes it doesn't, I, I don't, and uh, a lot of times I, I try to, you know, when, when it's uh, out over here, I, I would have them laid down. Uh, but if you have a beautiful piece of glass that, uh, in a, at home that's, uh, you know, part of your collection, um, there's really amazing, you know, museum uh, gel and wax that you can use to, uh, yeah, put it on your uh, surface. It also is good if you have uh, any cats at home. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, you could probably do that if you have like beautiful pieces of work. Um, let's see. Uh, what are Kazuki? What are some of your influences for your designs and some of your inspirations? Oh. Um, oh. Um, I think that, uh, I think that uh, um, um, a lot of these patterning work is um, very like traditional historical Venetian work, and so um, um, I love Italian glass. Um, they use a lot of color, um, and, and um, I, I tend to stick a little bit more towards like neutral colors with a little bit of um, colors added to it. But uh, but yeah, the, the, all the line works. Those are like uh, it's been done for a really long time. So historical glass pieces definitely inspires me a lot. Uh, those Venetian form, the gob goblet forms. Um, I, I scale it up, and I have pieces in the exhibition called the uh, Guardians, and so I have pieces that are pretty tall. That, that's in a Venetian goblet shape. The Guardian series, which is the three that you see when you enter the gallery space. Those are, how, how tall are those, like four or five feet? They're maybe taller? Oh, Somewhere yeah. around there, right? Yeah, five, four or five feet, yeah. Let's see, somebody's asking, do you do any sketches for your designs? Yeah, I do a ton of sketches, and I um, I scribble a lot in my in my yeah sketchbook and and uh, journal too. And so actually, at the museum, I have a piece uh, called Brainstorm. It's kind of about like that, like where I do like scribbles and stuff. And so I got an installation called Brainstorm where. Um, yeah, the part of the process is like jotting down, uh, you know, forms or, or words, and, uh, and uh, sometimes it's too much and it seems like a storm in here. Uh, so it's definitely good to get it out on paper uh, to record things uh, of your th thoughts and processes um, and ideas. And so I, I definitely um, do that. As, yeah. And that piece that you mentioned. Um, I apologize for the echo since we're in two different devices, but we're trying to mute each other when one's not talking. Uh, but that piece that you mentioned, that was also made with the with the cane, right? With the glass. Yeah, it's a similar type of uh, method. It doesn't have any color, um, but it's just a squiggle of um, clear molten glass that we stretched. Um, actually, David over here, he's the one who made that <laughs> the brainstorm squ squiggles. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Check out the check out the museum if you can. And you guys have a yeah, you know, online uh, tour of the, the the show coming up maybe. 
uh, or like the recording or yeah the recording we've been working on the on the previous recording which will go up on the website um, okay. and then um, this program will be edited and will also go live on our YouTube page and our um, hopefully in a couple of weeks we we're kind of like trying to uh, edit these and put them out in the, into the public as soon as we can and uh, a lot of that work is thanks to our uh, design um, a marketing and um, new person that I don't know if any of you have met Rudy before um, and Rudy he was helping us out with a lot of the camera work and letting y'all in into these programs as y'all know a lot of these zoom programs um, are a group effort and can be quite challenging so thank you all and thank you to, to also to David who's uh, cooling down back there uh, for helping out with all of this um, let's see I think we might have gotten another question in Oh, I am kind of amazed that you work with shorts. Do you start with more protective clothing until you get more skilled? It was as much of a dance as a sport as an art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely, it feels like a dance. Uh, and uh, my my uniform usually is t-shirt and shorts. Uh, it gets pretty quite hot in here. We got equipment that runs at two thousand degrees, uh, over two thousand degrees, uh, and. Uh, yeah, so some people would like to wear pants, but um, shorts is enough, you know, like if, uh, if once you figure out what you can hold and what you can't hold, um, the chances of burning right here, it becomes pretty minimal. And uh, um, so, yeah, to work comfortably, shorts is, shorts is great. Please, did somebody have a, a question? Oh, hey, Clara. I, have a question. <laughs> I was wondering the first raw material. How do you begin? It, you receive a powder? You receive a glass? How, where from yeah. do you buy that? Uh, um, yeah, it's actually um, over there. Uh, we have a pallet uh, full of uh, raw ingredients. It's all 20, 2,200 pounds or something of. Uh, what's called batch. Batch is a uh, uh, uncooked material that is, uh, um, that comes in, comes in 50 pound bags. Uh, but right here in the corner of the, the shop, we have these bags full of raw ingredients. Uh, yeah, and then they come from Sweden. Uh, it comes from Sweden all the way out to West Coast right here. And inside the bag is, it looks like this. Uh, so these are the, um, I believe it's about 75% silica sand, silica, and then another 25 or some, some, something like that what is like fluxes and stabilizers and, and uh, yeah, other stuff to make the glass crystal clear. And at the end of the, uh, I have, I have, I cook glass twice a week here. So that means, you know, um, I stick to a certain schedule to uh, put this in the in the furnace uh, and cook cook it kind of like a big pot of soup, you know. <laughs> and so I do that at nighttime, and then um, uh, I, I I wait a full day to squeeze all the bubbles out. So that way we have pristine quality glass. And so e even to get to take a gather out of the furnace, it's a very special thing. The furnace takes five days to come up to temperature and five days to cool down. So we never really turn it off. Uh, yeah, I charge, I, I cook glass tw twice a week. And then, um, so yeah, it's a very special feeling when you take a, when you, when you're able to take that dip, uh, of fresh molten glass. Um right now I um yeah I, I really wanna I really like working with scale. So um uh, working with in bigger scale um, is always my goal, like next goal. So um, I have a, you know, an, uh, 
uh, this, this show at the Prague Contemporary Museum that I put up, uh, which has, uh, I believe, a, yeah, like a few installations that are good size, but I'm always looking to, you know, um, work on different shapes and different uh, forms of installation. I think that's that's kind of um, where my interests are in glass. We also have a question from Keo Griffith. How do you manage heating with larger works? Sure, yeah. Um, so with larger pieces, uh, we uh, have a bigger uh, glory hole, which is the reheating chamber over on that side of the top. Yeah, that's the furnace. Yeah. This one right here. That one. So that one is about... Oh, how, how deep is that? I can't remember. It's 16 inches wide and uh, like 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 40 inches wide, I mean tall. So um, when we do our tall, really tall pieces that are on the show, um, we have again multiple people working and uh, taking reheats. Uh, and uh, we've actually touched the other side of the, the inside of the glory hall with a few of those pieces. Um, during the process of trimming the lip, they cut the excess off. We just tag the, tag the other side so it gets cut off anyway. Um, so yeah, we really maxed out the, that hole for, those, for, that, for that installation bottle. Let's see, we have uh, another one. Somebody's asking where the shop is in LA. And I'm actually going to paste a link to the website, KP Glassworks. And I'll, I'll post another link to Kazuki's website and one to the museum's uh, exhibition site in a second. Um, but if any of you are interested, um, are, have, you, have you been doing any classes, Kazuki? Or you typically do some workshops here, right? Yeah. Um, Pre-COVID? Yeah, pre-COVID. Um, we're kind of adjusting still. So um, we do like smaller, uh, like private lessons here. And uh, um, so we have um, uh, a few really amazing instructors here um, who do that regularly. And so it's a one student or two students uh, pri private lesson right now. Uh, hopefully that'll uh, that'll change in the future um, uh, as we as things get to get back to normal. I mean, yeah, we're kind of normal again, I guess. But yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. And then from Nina, uh, well, we drop the link to the shop. What is what's the COE of your glass, and is it leaded glass? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, COE is the coefficients of the expansion rate uh, in glass. And that, uh, what it means is, basically what it means is how, how the glass shrinks um, and, and the, the rate of shrinking uh, and expansion. Um, and so uh, that becomes important when you're uh, creating the glass batch, uh, which is the raw ingredient. It has different chemical uh, composition to make it behave in a certain way. So all of the pieces that are that we use in this shop is uh, it's so soda line based glass. Um, lead is uh, it's like it was it's used to make crystals um, and it, it, it increased the optical um, clarity in glass. So that's not the type of glass that we use here. Thanks everybody for being here. It was so exciting. Um, hope to see you somewhere. Thank you. Bye everyone, thank you.